Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's episode, we are talking about TypeScript's strict mode. It comes with a ruler and says you better behave. Short answer for you, should you use TypeScript's strict mode? The answer is uh, a decision tree. There's two sides to it. Uh, if you're starting a new project, yes, I believe you should use strict mode. Why? Uh, arguably, it's a better version of TypeScript. And two, it's a lot easier to start a new project with strict mode enabled than it is to migrate to strict mode. Which brings me to the uh, second part of that decision tree, which is if you are migrating a current JavaScript application to TypeScript, when you ask the question, should you use TypeScript strict mode? The answer is, if you can. Uh, the reason, my belief at least, why strict mode is configurable is because if it was always on by default, it would arguably make it impossible for you to migrate an existing JavaScript application to TypeScript. JavaScript, I love it, but it is sloppy and very not safe. And if you try to make that hard pivot from the wild west of JavaScript to the strictness of TypeScript, TypeScript will yell you out of the room. So, refresher. If, should you use TypeScript, new project, yes. Migrating existing project, if you can. Uh, you can gradually add more strict checks. That's the high level answer, if you are curious. If you're curious about what each of these strict checks are, then do I have a video for you? It's this one, it's this video. I'm gonna talk about all of the uh, strict checks when you go into TypeScript's strict mode. Hit the green screen. Okay, green screen enabled and website. So here I am floating in the void. That is the TypeScript documentation page. Oh, this green screen is so much fun. Uh, this is the tsconfig reference page, a reference for all your tsconfig.json questions. This is the JSON file, which uh, lets you configure how TypeScript type checks your code. There's, this has been recently redone, uh, which I think has been an incredible improvement. It's a new website, and in particular, this site has been broken up into categories, making it much easier to parse, read, and find the answers to the questions that you may have. For this video's purpose, the questions I have are around the strict checks, and we have a lovely list of them here. Uh, the first one, and we're just gonna go over each one of these together, and I'm gonna helpfully, helpfully, hopefully, helpfully explain to you why these exist. Uh, the first one is the top level dash dash strict. And this is the flag if you're starting a new TypeScript project, you should enable by default. The reason being that when you enable this flag, it enables all current strict checks and any future strict checks that TypeScript adds to its cadre of strict checks. So this is the easy way to just entirely opt into strict mode. So new project, turn strict mode on, you'll be a happy camper when you did. But that doesn't really tell you what strict checks are actually being done. And um, there's kind of two categories in my mind of strict checks. There's these two uh, big daddy strict checks that I think have the most impact on how you write your TypeScript applications. And then there's the rest that are nice and helpful, but won't make a material difference in your TypeScript application. They're definitely more strict, but like they're not as like, it's not as exciting, frankly. Uh, the first big daddy or big mama or big green screen, is it still there, green screen? Yeah, it's still there. Uh, um, the first one we'll talk about is uh, strict null checks. And I think this is one of the most pragmatic strict checks you can do. And one that if you try to enable on an existing JavaScript application may cause you to cry. Because what this check does is if there are any instances where a variable could be a string or null or undefined, TypeScript will say, make sure it exists before you try to access it. 
So the example here is that we have an object, and let's try this out, which is the best part of it. In the old playground, we have here an array of users, and we're calling dot find on the users. And if I hover over this, it will show me that find can return either a, it'll infer the shape of the object, which is name and age from here, or it could also return undefined. So it's possible that find will return undefined. So this variable could exist or it could not exist. But in this case, because we have uh, strict null checks enabled, before we can use it, we have to say, does this work or null? And then everything's happy. Uh, errors are gone. Uh, the now shorter way of doing null checks due to a new JavaScript TypeScript feature is optional chaining where you can just do that and the error nicely goes away. I think also where this rule comes in the most handy is when dealing with external APIs where you have some API that you're calling, you may be defining its shape. So you could have an interface, say response, API response, and it has a user, uh, it might have a user, and the user might have a name, which is a string, right? And you have some function that says, uh, so um, let uh, value is a API response equals this, um, like we just returned the value. Uh, if you do value.user.name, you're gonna have TypeScript yelling at you here because user is possibly undefined because you know that maybe the user is logged out and they don't exist and you're saying it as such and here it's gonna ask you to make sure that it exists before you actually make any operations on it. So strict null checks is super powerful but also super strict. So be careful when you enable it. The other big daddy rule, I don't know what I'm calling it that, very strange, is, uh, where is it? Uh, no implicit any. Uh, so let me back up one second, actually. So strict null checks is good to reduce runtime errors where you may have some JavaScript code that could accidentally be trying to access a value that's null or undefined and you get that lovely type error thrown in your console. That's what strict null checks I think is really strong for. Uh, no implicit any I think is better for just understanding your code base better. So no implicit any, essentially, so TypeScript has a type informant. Uh, in many cases, it can infer from usages what a type is. However, sometimes it cannot. And in those cases, what TypeScript will do is cast the variable as an any type. And any is the black hole of TypeScript. It is the part of TypeScript where TypeScript just says, no, good luck. Uh, so when that happens, when TypeScript gives up and doesn't have a clue and you let it implicitly type things as any, uh, you can run into confusion down the line. And this is actually probably the one, one of the hardest strict mode checks to enable when you're migrating an existing code base to TypeScript because it'll essentially require you to annotate everything that can't be inferred. And in particular, if you have a code base that's mixed with TypeScript and JavaScript, when you import a JavaScript module in a TypeScript file, by default, because there's no types there, that module will be of the any type. And if you have this rule enabled, no implicit any, TypeScript will yell in your face. So until you really get all your JavaScript files moved to TypeScript with you know proper types, uh, not possible to turn this rule on. And the thing that's actually a little confusing that I find people, so like in this case, the error is that it doesn't, S is being implied as any. It doesn't know what it's what it, what it could be. Uh, in this case, we want to say that it's a string and then TypeScript is happy. Uh, it's not just a string, substring. How, how dare you? One thing that I think that people don't realize though is that the rule's called no implicit any, which means that you can't allow TypeScript to implicitly put any value there However, you can, if you want, explicitly type it as any. And TypeScript is a-okay with that. 
So if just, if just for a migration step, if you want to just add explicit any types into your code base, that's fine. That's a migration path forward. But no implicit any will catch all those instances where you're not being explicit with your intentions. You can always go ahead and clean these up later. So those are the big two uh, checks for strictness. Uh, let's just go down the list of the other strict checks to kind of make sure that we're on the same page. We have uh, always strict. This essentially tells TypeScript to parse every file in ECMAScript strict mode, which is a different video's conversation about what strict mode is. I would absolutely have to reread it to understand the differences. Um, but the short answer is that it's better. So use strict mode. That's it. Um, no implicit any we talked about. There's no implicit this. Oh, and also a thing to talk about, which I think is really interesting, is that some of these strict rules came in different releases of TypeScript. You can see here TypeScript 2.0. And sometimes these rules were introduced because they just realized that they wanted to add it. Um, but in some cases, they weren't able to actually do these type checks due to the limitations of TypeScript itself. So for example, here, uh, TypeScript has two special values, null undefined, that have these values. Previously, it was not possible to explicitly name these types but no one undefined may now be used as type names regardless of type checking mode. Uh, it was previously, it was not possible. And then they added new functionality so they could then do more strict type checking because that's what happens when you iterate and improve on things. Uh, where was I? No implicit this. So this is a fun one. It essentially says that if you are using this in a class, and there is an implicit, uh, so raise an error on this expression with an implied any type. So similar to no implicit any, this is no implicit this, uh, which is a different handling because it's on the this function where this is actually being in a closure. So this, this, is, this value is re uh, referring to this function, not to the class instance. And this is where this doesn't know what the heck this is, so it's being implied, so it kind of catches a nice bug before it goes out into production, which is great. Uh, strict bind call apply. This is another one that I thought was really cool because um, this strict check was only made possible by the introduction of two new types, callable function and newable function in the lib.dts file. So again, new functionality added to apply this check. Uh, strict bind call apply. Bind call apply is different ways that you can actually invoke functions in JavaScript. Um, with strict bind call apply on, you say this function wants a string. And when you call it with a string, things are happy, but when you call it with the wrong type, it'll then fail. Um, and again, this is a feature because without that new functionality, let's go back to errors, um, this would not be possible. So you're actually going to TS config and I can say uh, strict bind call apply is off and the error goes away because that strict check is off and it has no idea that it exists. So again, this might be a free thing to enable. Shouldn't be too hard to enable, I assume. You're not doing much bind call applying in your code base, I imagine. Uh, strict function types. This is, it causes function parameters to be checked more correctly. So if you have a function that takes in a string and you have a type where the first argument is a string or a number, if you try to type this function up here, as this type, you're going to get an error because they are in conflict. So strict function types, function parameters are checked more correctly, uh, which are going to be pretty free to add. Um, and then strict property initialization. Uh, this is nice where if you have a class with instance properties and you have a instance property of email, it's a string. If you never set email, this will now yell at you and say, why isn't email here? Uh, related to this, actually, uh, let me check real quick. Uh, I think TypeScript 4 just came out and I think there was a new feature about class initializations where, uh, where is it? Class property from, from constructors. So this is cool. Um, can now use control flow analysis to determine the type of properties and classes when no implicit any is enabled. So it's using a previous strict rule where you can actually define properties and now TypeScript will then be able to infer its types 
through its initialization in the constructor, uh, which is awesome and saves you a few extra keystrokes from having to say that these are both numbers you can just use in ferment. So in conclusion, these are the strict checks. And that was your nice little rundown of what they are. So that is strict mode for you with TypeScript to refresh yourself, new project, turn it on, existing project, if you can. That's the rules, live or die by them if you desire. Hopefully you enjoyed that and you're feeling nice and snug in your strict application of TypeScript checks. Is that a joke or just a weird turn of sentence? If you like these videos, subscribe. They come out every week. And if you don't like these videos, go away. <laughs> no, actually stay, I'm kidding, stay. No, go away, no, stay. Um, uh, I will see you again next week with a brand new video to your face on YouTube. And until then, keep coding, stay happy. Bye.